can see it's on.
an addiction. Is it what you? Good morning to all of you. On behalf of Sarah's family, I thank you for coming here this morning to join them in this service of thanksgiving to God, celebrating the life of Sarah Lynn. A few words about the service before we begin. You see that the service is called Celebrating the Life. We would like to have all of you be a part of our celebration of the life that has been Sarah as she shared it with us over these years. It's a service of thanksgiving to God. We will hear God speak to us. We will go to God in prayer. We'll also be singing some hymns. I'm not sure how many of you are good hymn singers but Sarah would like me to encourage you today, sing, please. There are three hymns. The first one is an Easter hymn. It celebrates the good news that God has defeated death and that we have that promise. Sing it with Easter joy. The second hymn was a hymn beloved by James and Sarah beloved by many of us, a hymn in which God speaks to us and asks us to be God's presence to others in this world. It's Here I Am, Lord. Many of you may know it from your churches. If not, again, sing it as best you are capable of just singing. The final hymn is Abide With Me. We end our service by saying to one another that we know God is always with us in the depths of the valleys as well as on the heights of the hills. And so please join that too. Also notice, hopefully all of you or most all of you have an order of service. There's participation. Please participate in those parts marked in the bold. For example, when we read responsively the 23rd Psalm. This is a celebration. It's not just, it's not sadness. It's, it's celebrating the life of Sarah. Yes, it's sadness, but it's celebrating her life and the promise God gives us of new life. So please, let's make this a time of worship and a time of celebration as well. As you are able, Please stand for the call to worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We are gathered to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our sister Sarah, to give thanks for her life, to commend her to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Now, as I asked you, Please sing in spirit with Sarah. Stanzas one, two, and three of the hymn.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister Sarah. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the scripture readings. The first of our scripture readings is from the third chapter of the book of Ecclesiastes. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. The word of the Lord. I invite you to read with me responsively the Good Shepherd Psalm, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Our second reading is from the book of the prophet Isaiah in the 40th chapter. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exalted, exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. I invite you to please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The Gospel reading according to Mark, the 10th chapter. People were bringing little children to Jesus in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. 
But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took the children up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. My friends, last Friday morning, when Jim Wilde, my dear college and seminary classmate, and Sarah's dad, when Jim called me to tell me of Sarah's death and to ask me to bring a word of gospel, a word of good news to this service. Some words of Jesus came to my mind. These words from Matthew 25. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. I was thinking, of course, about Sarah what Sarah had meant to so many people in her much too short lifetime. And I was thinking about you, Sarah's family, her friends, her colleagues in school and community, many, many students over the years. I was thinking about all she obviously meant to you. Most importantly, however, I was thinking about what Sarah meant and what she still means to her Lord and God. As I thought about it, I realized why these words of Jesus kept coming into my mind. Because good and faithful servant is God's way of saying what Sarah meant to her Lord as well as to all of us. Yes, Sarah was one of those people of God for whom a celebration of her life is simply obvious and natural. Even though all of us here today wish that this particular gathering had not been necessary. Sarah was one of those people for whom it is easy to say to God, thank you for allowing Sarah to be a part of my life. Yes, I was truly blessed to know this woman, this woman of deep faith, this woman of so much love for life, so much determination for life, this woman with such a positive spirit, such a joyful excitement about the people around her. A woman genuinely wrapped up in faithfully serving her God, her family, her friends and community as best as she was able. And to do it with a smile and with a laugh that brought joy to those who knew and loved her. You see, my friends, God gives each and every one of us gifts and talents and countless opportunities to share with others what we have been given in service and in friendship to one another. Unfortunately, few of us are able to say 
that we have really and consistently made the best of what we've been given, of our opportunities, our talents and gifts. We get sidetracked far too often, don't we? Sometimes by our pride, often by our personal agendas and ambitions. Now we know, of course, that Sarah wasn't perfect. But in our eyes, and I believe in the eyes of her Lord as well, Sarah was a woman who made the most of her many talents, her many gifts, the most of the opportunities God gave to her to share with others. And Sarah did it. She truly lived for the sake of others, for her family, for her friends, for her community, most assuredly for the sake of her Lord. When love and counsel were needed, Sarah was there. When straightforward honesty was needed, when things needed to be done the best they could be done, when a little compassion and sensitivity were needed, Sarah was there. Sarah didn't have what most of us would call an easy life. Oh, Sarah had many, many blessings in her life, and she would most certainly be the first one to tell us just how richly blessed she had been. But many things in her life were hard work and challenges. Life wasn't all that easy, especially these last few years. But yet, when a positive example was needed, her family, her friends, her colleagues all knew where to turn. In all of the many ways, each of you look back on how Sarah touched your lives. You know that she most certainly was a good and faithful friend, a good and faithful servant. Today, however, what's most important to me, to me as one of Sarah's many, many friends, as someone who was privileged to be her pastor for a few years, what's most important to me is not simply what kind of a woman Sarah was, and in Jesus still is, but why? You see, at the very heart of Sarah, there's always been a simple, childlike trust in her Lord and God. Sarah was a good and faithful servant to her family because underneath all of her deep love and care for you, she joyfully understood that all of you were God's great gift to her. And she was thankful. Sarah was a good and faithful friend to so many because Sarah never ever took her friends for granted. She saw her, never saw her friends as people to be used, but as people with whom to share the joys of life. She was a good and faithful servant to her Lord and God. Because underlying Sarah's whole outlook on life was her faith that she, a forgiven sinner, had an even greater, more faithful servant in her Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, Sarah had no problem humbly confessing before God that she was far from perfect. She also had no problem simply 
and confidently believing, trusting, and celebrating God's good promise of forgiveness and new life to her in Christ Jesus. This faith was God's greatest gift to Sarah. Because through her faith, God was able to shape her into the loving, caring person all of us have been privileged to know and love. Now, I'm sure that Sarah would be the very first person in this room to tell you that we should not be giving all the praise and honor to her, but to God to all of those other beloved people in her life with whom she so loved to interact. Sarah was a humble woman who anchored her life in God's promises. She truly trusted that God's promises belonged to her, not because she was so good, but because her Lord and God is so good. Yes, my friends, Sarah knew that she had nothing to prove to God. She simply loved, she believed and knew she has always been loved by her Lord Jesus. Sarah simply served as she trusted her Lord Jesus had been faithfully serving her all her life. And of course, Sarah served very well. So last Thursday, when Jesus called her, she heard these words from her Lord. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. That's where Sarah is right now in heaven with her Lord Jesus. Certainly right now, you as Sarah's family and her friends, you miss her terribly, painfully. But just as certainly, in Christ Jesus, you can look forward to seeing her again. This, my friends, is why we Christians are able to talk so confidently even in a service like this. Because our trust in God's promise is the strength that enables us to move beyond our grief and get on with the life that God's given us. To Sarah, God has said, well done, good and faithful servant. Today you and I say to God, thank you for Sarah. Thank you for her love, for her care, for her service to so many, for her friendship. And of course we say to God, thank you for Jesus Christ, crucified and risen, with whom Sarah lives, through whom we will be seeing her again. God grant to you, each and every one of you, the joy and confidence of a faith, like with Sarah's. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God that passes all our human understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. We join together now in singing our next hymn, Here I Am, Lord. It is... It was Sarah, one of Sarah and James's beloved hymns. Let's sing it together as best we are able. Please stand as you're able.
all the people of God, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, in holy baptism you have knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. God of mercy, give courage and faith to all who mourn and assure and certain hope in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy, Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that where this world groans in grief and pain, your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to your light and life. God of mercy, help us in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. God of mercy, God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death. And by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also. And that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us commend Sarah to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Sarah. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
we close our worship with our sending hymn, Abide With Me. We'll sing stanzas one, two, and five. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen.